You are looking live at Island Extreme Bowl in Welch, Minnesota, where five of the greatest bowlers in the world have bowled 27 games across four different lane conditions. The diversity of styles staggering. The quality of talent legendary. They share one goal tonight to win a major title, plus $15,000 and a trophy with shipping included. Nice. We welcome you to Island Extreme Bowl in Welch, Minnesota. It's Mike Jakubowski alongside Joe Serrar, and this is it, Joe. It's the championship round, the stepladder finals of the PBA 50 Treasure Island Resort and Casino World Championship presented by Storm. And it's an exciting Final Five and plenty of history on the line tonight. We start with our opening match featuring Brian Kretzer and Harry Sellins. Kretzer performing in the position round to jump into the stepladder tonight. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, a lot of hard work all week getting to this point and uh, a legendary field to be sure. I can't wait for it to start. Nor can I. Coming out of the number three slot, Hall of Famer Pete Weber. History on his mind tonight. Three consecutive major titles on the PBA 50 tour has never been done and he can tie Walter Ray with 99 PBA titles something that Walter Ray did just here uh, yesterday right and I'm sure that's in the back of Pete's mind uh, he struggled on some pairs this week but for the most part when Pete finds it lights out Hall of Famers on the way up the chain and uh, the only lefty is Parker Bone the third does he just have a path does he have the lane all to himself uh, he does and in my opinion he is the top lefty talent out here tonight. All roads to the championship match lead to Norm Duke. I've seen it in his eyes. You've seen it in his eyes. He has had one goal. Nothing short of winning this event will satisfy him. Well, that's it. I mean, Norm's known to play well in majors, and he's on a mission this week. Uh, he's going to be awfully tough to beat. Saturday Night Live action on Extra Frame. It's a classic stepladder battle. History on the line and who will win the PBA 50 World Championship. We will find out live here at the Treasure Island Resort and Casino. And we'll head down to the lanes where tournament director John Weber is uh, getting set Thank to uh, begin our opening match between Brian Kretzer and the legend Harry Summons. Tournament director John Weber and uh, Linda Carter in the tournament office and their great administration of the PBA 50 Tour. And we begin Brian Kretzer taking on the legend Harry Sullins. And two interesting stories. Brian Kretzer is a rookie out here on the PBA 50 Tour. He's a winner on the PBA Tour and a winner twice now with senior regionals looking for his first PBA 50 national title. And you'll have to run the ladder. Sullins, Weber, Bone, and Duke, and really a gutsy performance. He's been battling uh, some physical issues. All right, he's, he's had an upper tear in his left thigh uh, since the U.S. Open. Uh, some issues with it, a little bit of pain to go along with it, but uh, I think both these players very battle-tested. Brian Kretzer, five and seven in the match play and getting around Bo Gergen in the position round to earn his spot, and he has the opening shot. Sullins dictates that Kretzer will begin. Here we go from Island Extreme Bowl. And a mixing hit, seven the last to fall. And the legend, Harry Sullins, USBC Hall of Famer, inducted in the last class this year in 2016. He finished uh, runner-up in the 16 Suncoast Senior U.S. Open for his best finish since 2012, and he lost to Weber in that event. Opening shot for Sullins in the nose, and 9-10 split with a wiggle on the 10. That'll need to be reset. Uh, kind of an unusual start for, for Harry. He almost seemed a little rushed to get his feet going a little bit. Definitely not in time or rhythm, but it'll come, and Harry knows it. And the 10 was wiggling and may have gone down. We have another look at the tail end of that, Jeff. 
And the rule is, even if it's on the way down, if the machine touches it, it needs to be respotted. So let's take you all the way through. And you can see the 10 getting kicked and leaning and leaning and leaning. But then the machine gets it. So that means uh, it needs to be respot, and it has been respot. And now Sullen shooting and open frame. Yeah, those first frames are tough to get through sometimes if you haven't been in this situation in a while. And even if you have, the experience of Sullins and Kretzer and uh, gone from the, the match play where there's all matches at once and into the situation now where you're it and uh, this is it. And we've got a great crowd here at Allen Extreme Bowl. And uh, we're in the second frame, opening match in the PBA 50 World Championship. Got his feet under him better on that shot. And little double bit, wood. Right, little light on a 2 8. Watch Harry Style. Good turn at release. Ball went a long way before it made its move. Interestingly, he's using a high polished medium RG ball with low flaring potential. Good for drier lanes. And Mr. Kretzer. A hypercell skid, scuffed up, strong core, lots of flair. Sends it wide, gets it back. Sullins with the slash, open and a spare. And uh, there's a great uh, look at the folks on hand and nice crowd support and fan support through all phases of our Treasure Island World Championship. Brian Kretzer out of the field of 83. He finished fourth after 15 games. His average, 234.6 over the Viper scorpion and chameleon patterns we're now bowling on the 40-foot world championship pattern and a 10-pin roller no that's the first time i've seen brian right of board 12 all week typically he was playing near the fourth arrow fifth arrow swinging it and bringing it so good these players are they can adjust and they've had to adjust quite a bit they began competition with the shortest of the patterns with the Viper and moved longer and longer through the Chameleon and the 47-foot Scorpion pattern and now backing off seven feet into the 40-foot World Championship pattern. And reasonably flat, two and a half to one ratio. You can see Brian's pin way to the right of that ring finger and that helps that ball get into a little faster roll, quicker roll, smoother break point on the back end. Interesting choice. Kretzer goes 5-7 and seven in match play to earn his spot here, and he gets into the nose a bit, 6-10. I yeah, didn't like that shot off his hand. Shaking his head. Pretty much right up 8. Kretz are clean through three, underway with our opening match at the PBA 50 Treasure Island Resort Casino World Championship. Opening match, the winner will move on to face Pete Weber, the number three seed. Parker Bone the third is waiting in the semifinal. Norm Duke, the tournament leader. Now Sullins with the 9-10 back here in the first, operates in the third. Light. Yeah, made a ball change quickly to a ball that hooked quite a bit more. You can see how much more he tried to curve it. So a lot of two eights this week, a lot of two eight tens, two four eights. And we can watch by the ball motion, even though we're on a 40 foot pattern, which gives us 20 feet of area for the ball to hook, it plays longer which means the ball gets into a longer skid through the front mid lane and late mid lane. Good conversion. I think th they're going to settle down. They'll, they'll settle down, and we'll see them start scoring pretty soon. Sellins, the winner of two PBA 50 titles back in 2011. And he's a three-time winner on the senior circuit and the defending champion of this event, last conducted in 2009, the PBA Senior World Championship. 
That was in uh, Hammond, Indiana, and featured on ESPN. If you'll remember that championship match, Harry Sullins faced Hugh Miller. And it's been seven years since the last senior world championship. And a strike on the board for Sullins. Indicates the can opener. He can breathe now. Yeah, he's off. Once you get that first strike, everything kind of settles down a little bit. Kretcher's got an eight pin advantage working in the fourth frame. And a strike for Brian Kretzer, a very unique style and a very unique approach. Yeah, unique in that he drifts a good 15 boards left. And for Brian, he's going reasonably straight for his game. He can hook it. He manipulates his hand positioning to change what's called axis tilt and axis rotation. He can take the same ball, hook it four boards, or hook it 14 if he wants. Let's see Parker Bone and... Norm Duke off in the distance awaiting their chance along with Pete Weber. Not a bad threesome. Not at all. And uh, had all the sound and taste of a flat ten. Better shot than the previous shot on that lane. And then shaking his head. Still maintains the lead, though. And let me correct myself. Uh, the PBA Tour Commissioner, Tom Clark, along with us tonight watching on Extra Frame, reminding me that the 2009 win for Harry Sullins came at Thunder Bowl at the very first World Series of Bowling that featured the Senior World Championship. I believe it may have been the year before that Sullins won another senior event, and that was at Hammond. I believe that was the Lake County uh, Open the year prior. Just a touch high, four pin. some moisture into the thumb and on his thumb give himself a little bit better grip good mix of senior citizens and some young folks rooting on our PBA 50 contestants that's a good crowd of contemporaries and as you mentioned the younger folks picking up the phone old school Good shot off the hand. Carries a late 10 pin. We got blocked out of it a little bit. Get a better view here. Maybe not. Yeah, you get a good view of Harry. 12 pin lead for Brian Kratzer. Working in the sixth frame. PBA Tour champion. <laughs> kind of paralyzed that five pin on the way in. Kretzer, his national title coming in the Go RVing Match Play Championship. That was a three-game total pins match for the PBA title. Brian also accomplished regional player. He's got 15 wins on the regional circuit. Each player now on a strike as we head to the seventh. 
And uh, Kretzer now outside second arrow. Looked about nine at the arrows. Yeah, inside, outside of that even. Yeah, I think his target looks to be around seven, eight. He did pull one in earlier. And again, all week he was inside. A little ball maintenance for Pete by Jim Callahan. Surface change. Weber waiting his chance. History Warner. on his mind. Coming up next, he'll get the winner here. Sullins needs a double. Light. Yeah, check it out. You can see the players have loosened up. Strokes have gotten better. Good, good power. Ball. Good pin action. There he is, Pete Weber, gunning for three in a row in the magical season of 2016. He's finished no worse than fourth. He's got five titles. He's won the first two majors. And he's looking to equal Walter A. Williams Jr., who posted his 99th PBA win yesterday here live on Extra Frame in the regional event as a part of this world championship. Now Sullins can cut the lead to single pins with another strike, eighth frame. Very clean off the hand. Great reaction on that. You can just tell it's, if it's clean off the hand, it's going to be a good shot. Solid at the line. Right around board eight at the tracer. High flush. Kretzer a winner yesterday here at Allen Extreme Bowl in one of the three regional events. Each of the pattern championships carried its own regional title as a separate competition. Brian catching in on one of those three yesterday. Tells the line in his eighth. Light, 10 pin. That was a big shot there. Just didn't catch it. I think I spied a little pinky tuck there. What's that do, Joe? Uh, generally gives you a little bit better support. The ball doesn't fall to the right as easily in the palm. And it allows the ring finger to stay in the ball a little bit longer. It can create a little bit more turn. There's quite a few players on tour, both senior and young, that curl the pinky. With the count, Kretzer now leads by just one pin as we enter the ninth and 10th. Light and gets the five from behind. Watch that pin action on the five. It was a paralyzer and then hit yeah. the second time around. Ball just stunned it a little bit. But you talk about curling the pinky. I think we're going to see both Pete Weber and Parker Bone that tuck that pinky under. Harry Sullins now in a position to shut out. He's got three strikes working. Max for Kretzer is 227. Here's Sullins in the ninth. Power. Best shot of the match for Sullins. No mix, no fuss, solid hit. Battle tested. They play when it counts, which is the latter part of the game. See how well they handle the pressure in the ninth and 10th. Two okay. strikes and change for Sullins to shut out. Oh my, light and a 2-4-10, indicating a wiggle. Well, he fell a little right on that shot, lost some leverage, and ball just wiggled down lane. Just enough. Inopportune in. time. Brian takes the lead back if Harry can't convert.
And gave it a roll, but open frame in the 10th, 201. And Kretzer just needs a mark. Sounds, it sounds easy, doesn't it? It sure just does. needs a mark. Circles in the first and tenth, 201 for Sullins. And uh, yeah, the phrase, just a mark. But we did see a lot of 2A 10s, 2 4 10s this entire week. That looked good. Light. And we and he see comes another. Right back. And I believe he's got the eight behind it. 2 8 10. And he said, wow, to himself right there. And we see more. Wow. And that's where the phrase, just a mark, shows. Harry wins. Wow. Oh, wow. Sullins with a reprieve. And a 201-193 win, Harry Sullins advances to face Pete Weber. We'll be back at Island Extreme Bowl. More to come.
Our thanks to everyone at Treasure Island Resort and Casino and the staff here at Island Extreme Bowl for their support of the PBA 50 Treasure Island World Championship and our tournament host Bob Mysick as for his support and uh, he competed here and he made one of the match plays in the pattern championship round so thanks to Bob Mysick and uh, thank you to everyone here at Treasure Island uh, we hope to return soon and often whether we're bowling or not improvements made here on the property brand new water park added and uh, the buffet expanded we were able to take advantage of that uh, two nights ago and now our next match Harry Sullins versus Pete Weber and a crossover yeah, and a ball change maybe he felt he was fortunate to get through that first match with what he had in hand as you can see more of a solid reactive And, of course, Pete Weber is a higher seed, has his opponent begin, regardless of what's happening on the lanes. Here he is, Hall of Famer, Pete Weber, magical 2016 PBA 50 tour season. After a fourth place finish at the season opening event, Weber runs off four straight victories, takes a week off, and then wins again before winning the Senior Masters. And he begins with a perfect strike. You see how smooth the back end motion of Pete's ball is using Storm's strongest ball in their line, Alpha Crux, scuffed up, pin below the ring finger. Pin below gets it a little bit more mid lane strength, keeps it from being overly snappy when it comes off the pattern. So Pete is all about control here, not skid flip, the opposite. And he goes flush, flush. Very efficient double on the board for Pete Weber. Looking for his 10th senior circuit win tonight. Here's an extra look. Yeah, let's watch the shape. Very soft and smooth, but heavy roll. I think Pete just wants to maintain the pocket. Wants to stay away from two tens. Sullen zones 32 PBA at national and PBA 50 uh, regional titles. And a good hit for Sullen. Spare strike. Sullen's the central and Midwest PBA 50 player of the year in 29 10 and 2014. Splits the eight and the nine. High and it was 3 6. I would think when you're bowling against Pete, it's more difficult to get that ball off your hand as cleanly as it is as opposed to during practice and warm up. You just want it so much more, you just grab it a little bit. And the other factor is when Pete steps up and doubles, you know he's not gonna shoot less than 220, so you need to think, oh, I gotta shoot 230, man. Right, and Pete likes to, get, likes to get on his opponents early, put added pressure. Double working third frame. And he shreds the rack. Weber slides out the seven last. Pete owns a record 51 regional titles, 48 regular and three uh, senior regional. And he's sitting on 98 PBA titles, including national, regional, senior national, and senior regional. Walter Ray got one ahead of him yesterday, winning one of the pattern championships of the win tonight. Pete can earn his 10th senior 
Third straight major and 99th overall PBA banner. That ball yeah. is in the nose. Yeah, he was left to target, a little soft with speed. He knows it. Fortunate for Pete, he's not paying with a big wide open split. Inside a target and a miss spare. Something you don't see too often from Pete. Yeah, putting a gun to your head. Pete's pretty hard on himself sometimes. Despite the open, Weber leads by five pins, fourth frame. Sullen's in the nose, 3-6. Yeah, returns the favor. And these aren't horrible shots. I mean, this is a tough pattern to play on. There's not a 2-3-4 board area. Maybe, maybe a two-board area if your speed release and rotation is exactly the same. Sullins covers. He's a member of the Michigan State, Detroit, and Michigan Majors Bowling Halls of Fame. And uh, talking to himself, what do uh, think's going through his, his repertoire? Well, being the legend... It's hard to know if anything is going through his head, but he, he's just probably thinking of ways to execute cleaner, get the ball off my hand, clean, project it. I think he's confident in the ball in hand and the line he's playing. Sometimes you just need to just relax. But again, it's for a major and it's against Pete. That was good. That was clean off the hand. Light. Came in a little late, but it was clean off the hand. See how speed sensitive this pattern is. Down on the low end, Parker Bone the third, throwing some warm-up shots, staying loose. Winner will get Parker in the semifinal. Sullen's cross lane. Clips the 10. That's probably one of Parker's strongest attributes, his speed consistency. Second to none. Here's Pete Weber with the count. He maintains the eight pin advantage on the open here in the beer frame. Just a touch high, avoids the four nine. more like it efficient strike what impresses me when Pete really gets that hit is the pins don't go flying all over the place very efficient they just softly fold keeps the pins low yeah each pin doing its job knocking down its counterpart nearby no wasted motion I think that's a byproduct of his ball speed as well he's not as fast as some of the guys out here and like Harry will send some pins around a little bit more. As you can see, there are much more liveliness, but not as efficient in getting down 10. Ball change again. Back to the Venom Cobra Shock. Comes in light. Throws the 5 in front of the 7. 
I, I think Harry's kind of caught between too much ball in one hand and then another ball not quite enough. Yet he's still mathematically well in the match. Cover for Sullen. Someone's going to need to grab it. Final four frames. Semi-final next. Parker Bone warming up and then the title match with the survivor of the stepladder has a date with Norm Duke for 10 frames of bowling and a major title on the line. Yep. Harry, one strike and six shots, three taps. Not ideal. That is it's an ugly three, four, ten. Ball definitely has to turn left at the back end to leave a three, four. So basically just pick up the three ten the way you normally would and hopefully you hit the three light enough to slide into the four. Saw a bunch of these this week. Saw a bunch of them made as well. And when back ends are double stripped, which means clean, the ball tends to turn left easier. Just like that. Just like we drew it up. And they love it here at Island Extreme Bowl. Here's an extra look at the conversion of the 3-4-10. Nicely done. Sullins stays within a mark of Weber. But Pete, with the strike working, can now increase his lead. With the count loss, peak now up 12 pins, can extend to 22. He raced. Big double. No doubt. The crowd was murmuring prior to that shot from Pete. Here comes Harry. <laughs> but Pete quelled that rather quickly. And if he can go bang, bang, he's 30 plus up, eighth frame. Ten pin, light hit. No, nope, couldn't shake out the ten. Important count loss there on that split for Sullins, too, as he's now down 21. Yeah, he's going to need a little help from Pete unless he can find something. Again, he only has one strike and seven attempts. Sullins absolutely needs to strike twice here. A little momentum after the split conversion. And here he is in the eighth. High. Three, six, seven, ten. Yeah. Last time on that lane, he left that light seven. Gives it a little extra, and we know these back ends hook strong. And boop. Well, same concept on the conversion. He needs to hit right of the three pin, make the baby split, send that three into the seven. Sounds easy, but it isn't. And eight out. And now Sullins trails by 43. Uh, correct that. 37. Regardless, it's a bunch. It's a bunch. Best it's Sullins good. can shoot now is 197. And he hasn't had many strikes. 197 max. Pete's already pacing two team. And Weber will have the uh, opportunity to end it right here. The magic number is 198. One spare and two frames. That's 
the best mark. And Weber already thinking ahead, calling for the bullpen. And uh, Team Storm rep Jim Callahan will head over, and they'll uh, think strategy now that the match is in hand. Pete's got a whole tenth frame to game plan for his match with Parker Bohm. Trying a different ball, even though that ball went through the pins plenty nice. In fact, three of the last four have. It should be a little cleaner and a little stronger coming off the pattern as it was. A little deeper. I think Pete's just looking ahead to what the lanes may transition to. So Pete Weber's a winner and nothing but Hall of Famers left on the way to the PBA 50 World Championship title. Parker Bone next and Norm Duke now starting to get loose. Pete Weber, a lot of things happening. He could win his 10th senior title tonight, three majors in a row, 99 lifetime PBA, but he's got to go through Parker Bone and then Norm Duke. Do not miss the next hour here live on Extra Frame, and I will make a personal request uh, to everyone watching tonight. One legend to another. Harry congratulating Pete on his way off the approach. And here's my personal request. Everyone watching, head over to uh, social networking right now and uh, make any kind of post that you're watching Extra Frame live from Minnesota and that there are three Hall of Famers left and that Pete Weber has a chance to win three in a row and that Parker Bone has a chance to become the first ever to win the PBA World Championship and the PBA Senior World Championship. And Norm Duke is in the title match. That is huge, and it's a great hour of entertainment coming, and I want everyone out there to go on Facebook social networking, tell your neighbors, invite the kids, and uh, wake the dog, and uh, yell out the window that you're watching the PBA 50 Tour live on Extra Frame tonight. Sullen's finishing up. And a fourth place finish here at the PBA Senior World Championship. We'll be back with uh, Weber and Bone. Semifinal coming next.
take the inside route. In the Master of Ceremonies, John Weber introduces the players for the folks here at Island Extreme Bowl. Here we go. Number two seat says Pete Weber begins. And Weber will do so on the left lane. And after speaking with the ball reps from Storm, Petey may use a different ball on each lane. Starts with the Storm lock on the left lane, which he finished with in his previous match. And that ball's got some life to it upon going through the pins. Parker using a Brunswick Brainiac. Playing right between second and third arrow. That's a pretty good reaction. Looks like it's going to be a high scoring match after one frame. I have that feeling. A strike a piece. And I, I mean 260s. Parker Bone, member of both the PBA and USBC Halls of Fame. He won the Miller High Life Classic in uh, Mooresville, North Carolina at the Apostrophe Georgia Pappas' Victory Lanes for his first PBA 50 title tour in his rookie season. He's got three senior titles, national looking for four here tonight. And he would be the first ever to win both the PBA World Championship and the PBA Senior World Championship. Who will ever forget his memorable run at the World Championship when he got in late due to Hurricane Sandy. Pounds a strike there. Made the cut on the number at 24. Made the show on the number at 5th and ran the ladder for his World Championship title. Boom. Throw, throwing it like a kid. Getting down low, loose swing, good speed, good rotation. A classic battle. Parker Bone the third and Pete Weber. I mean, does it get any better than this? It does, because the winner gets Duke. But is that better than this? I'd say equal. It'll be... I would say equal. Even better. Okay, Pete, different ball on the right lane. He's got him dancing. And to be able to make those calls in a pinpoint moment. Now, as well as these balls are drilled for Pete... There still can be a subtle difference in feel, but I think Pete has such good touch, and he knows products so well. He's using an interchangeable thumb system, the Vice It system. That helps keep that thumb feel as close as humanly possible. Pete knows it's just execution. He's got the look. Stood up and gets it. Doesn't matter. Yeah. When you got the right ball in hand, you get that little bit of extra wiggle room. He's smiling. Something got his attention, oh. and uh, that direction will receive. Uh, oh, he's, yeah, he, he's not giving up eye contact. Attention. Yeah, he got, he got wide, but it came back high flush. I thought the noise occurred after the release, but if it's anywhere near close to the release, that'll disturb the player. All strikes, bone in the third. It's a classic battle.
Making sure there's no oil residue on the ball. Pin below the fingers for Parker, which he told me helps him keep the ball a little smoother off the back end part of the lane. So it's not always good to get a skid flip ball reaction. There's times you need control, have it read the lane soon enough, and oh, something bothered Parker. Too many times uh, consumers going to the pro shop saying, I need, I need long and I need left turn and for a righty. And that's typically the trickiest of ball reactions to control. Turkey piece, fourth frame. Hambone. <laughs> and he walked it out. It's a beaut. It's a semifinal. Duke's waiting. And I'm having fun. I hope you are too. Mike Jakubowski with Joe Serrar. Jeff Goodyear driving the TriCaster 855. Phil Brylow providing us with these great camera looks tonight. And we're glad you're with us. Fourth frame, all strikes, semifinal. <laughs> Dueling hand bones. He's still glancing over to the right. What's ever bothering him, <laughs> it's not affecting him. We've got a good one. Classic who blinks first style match. Two PBA Hall of Famers, each with history on their mind. Weber, no one's ever won three majors in a row on the senior tour. Weber can accomplish that tonight, while at the same time earning his 10th senior title and his 99th overall PBA banner. Fifth frame, all strikes. <laughs> oh, drilled him, no doubt. Open hand, good follow through right out the board. Eight, nine at the splice, which is that dark marker down lane about 45 feet. Something didn't look right. Nope, nope. Maximum penalty. They have been a board inside. It may not have been as bad a shot as the result. Parker quickly takes two. Well, he got it down there in a hurry. That's the blink and uh, was trying to figure out. I mean, it just didn't look right at the post. And uh, minuscule loss of leverage. And or causing the pull? I mean, there's a multitude of things it can be. I mean, we, we know that just from bowling ourselves. And Parker knows what it was. And if he can correct it, he will correct it right here. That looked better. It's one slight miscue so far out of our first 11 shots. And that is the difference. One Slight miscue that turns into a disastrous open. And now Weber up in the sixth. Already a winner at the U.S. Senior Open and the U.S. Senior Masters. Looking to go three in a row in the majors. Needs to get to the title match first, sixth frame. Good look good off the hand. Now, as long as he doesn't get slow or, or grabby at release, he is going to be hard to beat. High flush, no doubt strike. I've just witnessed some of the best bowling uh, this season on the PBA 50 Tour to take nothing away from the, uh, the PBA Tour and all of the great things happening there. Uh, but... To watch Weber on a week-to-week -week basis do his thing has been incredible. Qualifying match play, seating himself, step ladders, 
fifth position tournament leader. He's done it from everywhere. Can he do it again tonight? Seventh frame. Bang! Splits the eight of the nine. You couldn't get a laser micrometer to measure a better split between the eight and the nine. How would you like to find a genie in a bottle and get one wish? Would it be to be Pete Weber for a day or to be Pete Weber for a lifetime? Uh, how about Is that an interesting life? I'd take a game to be able to throw a A game like would be nice, yeah. <laughs> now Parker Bone can do nothing but strike. Parker knows it's not over, though. One miscue from Pete, then we could have a new leader. And Ooh, a seven pin. Looks hurts. like Parker went a little uh, yeah. deeper yeah. that time. Again, this is a demanding condition. Oh, that messenger could have caught it. Just went right in front. It takes no time and makes that seven pin look no. effortless. And you'd think he'd stand up there for an extra half a second or two and make sure he's composed. And he's made a few of those. There's your tournament leader. And the uh, the immovable object might be facing the irresistible force next. Couple flat yeah. sevens. Yeah, it looked and, like he got uh, a little spinny on that one. The ball just didn't read the pattern quick enough. Yeah, he came around that quite a bit, as you can see. And it deflected quite a bit more than some of the previous shots. I mean, we got all crowd favorites. People love Parker. You got to love Pete. And Norm is always a crowd favorite. Oh, yeah. Pete Weber. Stay away from horrid counts, and uh, we're going to have an epic <laughs> title match. And uh, it is epic. Because the will of each player is so strong. That is what you want in a battle for a major. And 10-pin uh, stands on an off hit. Nose hit. But Weber well in command. A little soft with speed, and I, that's what Pete has to guard against. And yeah, that came pretty high in the pocket, but he'll take nine spare. Two of bowling's top ball manufacturers being represented in this match as well. Brunswick. Been around for over 100 years against Storm, kind of the young upstart. And they uh, they all want their staffers to win, obviously. But Callahan and Del Bell, they'll be the first to congratulate Parker if he were to have won. Better shot from Pete. Parker knows his game is over because Pete's unrelenting right now. That was a good shot. Well, official now, we have a championship match. It'll be Pete Weber and fellow Hall of Famer Norm Duke. And uh, if uh, you can see the look on Norm Duke's face that I'm getting behind him on lanes 9 and 10, uh, intensity, it just begins to describe. Third place finish for Parker Bone, the third. And we turn our attention to our title match. It will be a big one.
And Joe, two matches in a row, Pete has the 10th frame to uh, experiment a little bit. And he may, and he is. He's taking the ball he's been using on lane 15 to lane 16. Creates a little more push, as we see. Maybe too much, maybe not, but definitely went longer than the, the Alpha Max, which grabbed a couple feet sooner. Now Pete will see if he can fine tune that ball reaction. He may just bump one right with his feet, keep his target the same, and see if it faces up better. A little smile from Pete. It's major time. It definitely reacted stronger. And he just pointed at the Alpha Crux. He may stay with that since he saw a little under overreaction with the lock. Coming up next, championship match. Hall of Famer Norm Duke versus Hall of Famer Pete Weber. The irresistible force versus the immovable object. Something's got to give. Stay with us. Title match next.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start the championship match of the PGA 50 Tour Treasure Island Resort and Casino World Championship. These two major champions are the last. 38 time PGA Tour champion Norm Duke. Both players being ready at the USBC and all players. Should be a great match. These guys have hold for many titles over the years. So let's give them one more round of applause to start the match. You look at the intensity of Norm Duke, and you see that look on Norm Duke's face? He uh, is all business, and then look at Pete Weber. This is incredible. Mike Jakubowski with Joe Serrar, and it's the title match. Tournament leader dictates that Weber will begin. Here we go, 10 frames of bowling for a major title. Weber officially slaps the 10 out. Neither player a stranger to being in this situation. Title match for a major. Norm, ball choice. Roto grip menace, send it at 500 grit. Pin right above the ring finger, which puts it above four and a half inches for Norm. Six around the 10. Army playing right down board four, pretty pretty straight to the pocket. He is in the oil. There's a lot of volume outside. Not venturing to play inside. For a spare ball, he's going to a crux pearl. Throws his little backup release all over that 10 pin. Tip. Norm constantly fidgeting with feel and Texture in his thumb hole. He'll take pieces, rip them in half. Here it looks as though he's putting a full piece in. His thumb can change from practice to start. And some people may be wondering, why is he adding tape? Because a lot of PBA players, a little more callous on their thumb. Their thumb can actually shrink as they bowl, compress in size, and the hole gets loose. And if Norm feels loose, Norm grips it, and he does not want to grip it. You can hear the crowd in the background. Duke. So stone 10, stone 9 for Norm. Right around five, six at the arrows. It definitely came in a little, little high, a little deep. Two spares for Duke. Pete Weber with a strike up. All the history on the line. Duke wants this so bad. So does Pete. So much history for Pete tonight. Tenth senior title. Three straight majors. No one has done it. And his 99th PBA banner tying Walter Ray who did it yesterday. Duke hasn't won in two years on the senior tour. Bad body language and crossing over 6-10. Yeah, and Pete staying with a different ball in the right lane, an earlier stronger hooking ball. And he may have adjusted with his feet, moving left to try and create a little more length, but I think Pete just didn't throw it great. He is human, even though he seems to be superhuman among us mortals here, he is human. Keeps the match close. So no runaway, no long strings of strikes from the first. Third frame. No. 
Solid flush pocket hit for Weber. Eighteen at the arrow is out to eight. Ball finishing right behind the five pin. That's what pros look for. Duke, a member of both the PBA and USBC Halls of Fame, he earned PBA 50 Player and Rookie of the Year honors in 2014 in his first senior campaign. Outside part of the lane, and he drills it. That is such a tough shot. You have to be so precise. And you can hear the crowd roar. Seems to be the bias toward Norm in this title match. And the ball did not come back. There we go. See where that pin is located, the little orange dot right above the fingers. Tells us where the top of the core is located. And by moving it around, it can affect shape of hook. Bang, bang, Norm Duke. We have a match. Just perfect. And just look at Norm, look at the intensity feel his heart literally beating right out of his chest and Norm has to control that and he does now right back at Weber Norm goes bang bang on Pete fourth frame strike working and Pete delivers That's efficient better, yeah. strike One pin advantage for Pete Weber. Title match, PBA 50, Treasure Island Resort and Casino, World Championship. On the line, one pin separating two great Hall of Famers. Duke and Weber, six frames remain. Little hop and a four pin. A little hop just enough to cause him to kind of snag it a little bit at release. Didn't project it quite to the right. He's not happy about that because any non strike potentially gives Norm room to make up ground. Norm checking the approach before he goes up. Even match. Norm Duke with the extra stare. Perfect. The last three shots, Joe. Perfect. I don't think I've ever seen Norm so focused. <coughs> Norm grabs a re rack, gives him a chance to take down that heartbeat. Turkey working, six frame. around the 10. He liked it. Right over board five. Not a lot of deflection. Six pin just went over the top. One of the bad breaks, if it is such a thing, as a bad break in bowling is just bad reaction. Or not great reaction. I should clarify that.
and Norm uses the strike ball to pick up his 10 pins. Well, yeah, he's been using a Crux Pearl with a little bit of a backup release. He's never really been a proponent of using a different ball or a spare ball. He prefers to use either what he's using for striking or a strong ball and just flatten it. He's so good at it. It's like a boxing match. Two great ones. Body punching. Not each other, but the pins and the matchup. Six around the ten. Yeah, that was a great shot from Pete. There's times you have to be happy with execution, even though you're not happy with the result. He knows he threw it about as good as he can. Pete does go for the spare ball. Right over the fifth arrow. And clips it on the left slides side. Slides his way into it. What? <laughs> what do you mean, what? <laughs> I'll get an ooh. But for Pete, that is almost a miss. He's normally dead center on the, on the 10. Well, by USBC rule, we do put a slash in the box for that effort. And now Pete Weber trails by 10 pins. Final four frames, title match for the major. The difference, a thin margin of three strikes by Duke. Outlasting the Weber double, and now 10 pins becoming issue for both. Seventh frame. No temp in there. Say Norm spreading his index finger. Good balance through the swing. And behind the ball. Ooh, out yeah. comes the foot in the bucket. This reminds me of the time he left that dinner bucket and he needed a conversion to win the U.S. Open. Biggest spare ever. Thankfully, the eight gets kicked away here. It's just the two, four, and the five. Goes to that Crux Pearl, sanded Crux Pearl. Should go hard and straight from the left side of the lane, which he does. The beautiful way he manipulates the ball in that situation, completely taking the chop out of play. I think his goal is to hit that two pin dead flush and centered. And if he misses slightly left or slightly right, he'll still convert it. Duke up seven, final three frames. Yeah, Norm always likes to take the potential chop out of play. Strike for Norm Duke, but Pete Weber steps up with a chance to take the lead late in the match. Here's an extra look. Now the most exciting part of our game, frames 8, 9, and 10. I mean, just look at Duke. He looks like he just ran laps around the building. Adrenaline flowing and now waiting as Weber steps up with a chance to take the lead. Eighth frame. Pete should take a deep breath. Half step back before he starts his approach. And Weber efficient strike and he takes the lead late. Three pin lead. No doubt strike for Pete Weber. He's taking the lead and he can extend now. Put up a turkey of his own. Two great ones and a great match. We're glad you're with us here. Live on Extra Frame. More action to come. Coming up, the PBA 50 continues in Hammond, Indiana next week at the South Shore Open. The PBA Tour and the PWBA Tour combine next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the PBA. PWBA striking against breast cancer. Mixed doubles. Now Weber can extend his lead. Foundation Frame. High, 3 6 10. Boy, that didn't look bad from here, but 
May have just been a smidge slow. Just a touch. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen Pete leave three six tens. And he's missed late, one. Late in matches, and he did chop one on the fill ball, 11th frame. This one he should make. Uses his strike ball and converts. And he chopped it last time with a spare ball. Weber on the spare. Joe, this match is even. Yeah, Pete, very disappointed that he just couldn't execute a little cleaner on that. Yeah, he knows. Look at it. Look at the look in his face. What did I do? Even match advantage to Duke on the strike. Foundation frame. It hangs in the balance. It still can go either way. How will it end? Okay, Norm with a 2-4-5 last time on this lane. Prior to that, two strikes. It's pretty good. Six gets the 10. Slight doubt in Norm's mind. Well, he could shut out Pete right here. There was a slight doubt in that yeah, body language that the ball the got the job done. Yeah, I think the only pin he thought could stand would have been that 10. But the six pin did its job. Max score for Pete Weber, 225. We see Norm every now and again bring her back. Yeah. And he's like a cat when he does it. Great body control. All Pete can do is hope for a mathematical chance to win this title. He knows Norm gets up there and goes bang, bang, it's over. That's the first one. The second one will ensure the victory. Yeah. Now he really liked that one, as we'll see. He just gave it a body jump and a fist pump, and watch oh, right there, yeah. So he, that was clean off the hand. Ball right. path was beautiful, but straight to the back of the pin. It's deck. not over. One more strike, and Norm will claim the victory. Pete can go 225. This one gets Norm in the 230s. Strike for the win. And he just needed the count, apparently, because he went with the backup ball. Duke, a winner, defeating Pete Weber at the PBA 50. Treasure Island World Championship. Norm Duke's a world champion. Strike would have put Norm in the 240s. The nine is all that is needed. And uh, Norm Duke a winner. And Pete Weber with a runner-up still has finished no worse than fourth on the PBA 50 tour. And uh, I'm going to head down lane side and talk to him. title match. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever.
Norm, I'm so excited I forgot to button my jacket. <laughs> I gotta look presentable for the folks around it the world. It doesn't fit, buddy. <laughs> you need a new coat. Ladies and gentlemen, the PBA 50 Senior World Champion is Norm Duke. Norman, uh, I saw it from the first moment I saw you when I came to Treasure Island for this event. You had a look in your eye. You had a mission. Uh, you were here. I saw it all week, the seriousness, your planning. Every move you made this week was to get you here, and you did it. Congratulations. I do this every single week, Mike J. It just doesn't work out all the time, but I'm glad that you noticed that I have been working extremely hard. Uh, Pete Weber has been rubbing our face in everything this year. Uh, he's bowled for the title match every single week but one. And that's quite incredible. So when I went home, I said, look, you either step up or go home. <laughs> it's that way. Norm, there's a sign here promoting this event. And it was, we thought, uh, uh, <laughs> pretentious of what was going to happen. And the sign is of four uh, PBA greats promoting this event. And it's previous winner here, previous winner here, previous winner here, and Norm Duke. And now uh, you've made the marketing for next year that much easier. Well, you know what? I, I appreciate them for, you know, calling it. I certainly didn't call it as well as they did. But look, uh, it all comes down to, uh, to holding it together, to having a great, great team behind you. I'd like to thank Storm for being that great team. Uh, Jimmy Callahan and Del Ballard Jr., those are the two guys that you see with the Storm team coats on. They, uh, they work as hard as we do. They share in our championships. They share in our losses as well. I'd like to thank uh, Bob Mysick. What a great job he's done for us this week. Us, tremendous host. Uh, anything we want, we get. He said uh, the other day, do you want to go golfing? Don't have clubs? Well, I'll get you some. He let me borrow his clubs. They've never played so poorly in their lives. <laughs> but thank you, Bob. We appreciate that. And uh, to you guys. To the fans, I mean, this is one of the best crowds we see. Thank you, Diana Ross, if that's the case. But hey, whatever we can do, we appreciate y'all being here. Big thanks to everyone here at Island Extreme Bowl and Treasure Island. And Norm, uh, your assessment of the title match and the championship pair, you had a chance to assess it and uh, your game plan, and you executed. What was the game plan going in? Well, I haven't played right of the second arrow all week long, but uh, when Pete... When he's on the floor, uh, he can do some serious damage to a lane. And uh, as soon as I get near him, my ball starts going everywhere. So I said, look, uh, it has to be one from out. I believe that with all my heart. I went with it. You know, I haven't thrown a game out there yet. And uh, the only game I got was 230, and it was enough. So hey, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. My assessment was, though, that uh, he's, just, he's just that good. And it takes, it takes our best to beat him. And uh, you're the champion. And we have our uh, check and trophy presentation. And uh, Bob Mysick, our tournament host, is going to uh, make the presentation. Thanks, Mike. You want me to hold both of those? Yeah. Good you. job. Thank you. You, uh, let me hand you that first. There's a check for uh, $15,000, and Pete will get a check for $8,500. Um, uh, it's funny, Mike takes my line like he always does, but I, uh, Norm had called me about the pro. I'm doing some charity work for us. I'm going to let you hold that. I'll it's really heavy. You, yeah. Don't drop it. I checked it to make sure it won't fall apart. And uh, that's what I told him. I said, I said, well, your picture's on the fourth one. If you don't win this year, you can't come back. So we only have room for four pictures on her, but you stole that. But uh, just from the Prairie Island community and Treasure Island Lanes, uh, great bowling. What are you doing? And uh, we really appreciate you guys coming. I, I think what people don't see here is, I mean, these guys, as soon as they're done tonight, the stuff gets tore down by these PBA guys, and they get in their cars and trucks tonight or tomorrow, and they're going to Hammond, Indiana tomorrow. Um, it is. It's really nice that they do that for us. They come up to Minnesota. Minnesota's not exactly on the way from Vegas to Indiana, but they come up here and bowl every year. And, uh, you know, another person, John Weber, he sits and talks about how great we are here and everything, but he... We, we've already talking about next year. I mean, we've already got next year planned. We're talking about what we can do to improve, what we can do to uh, make it a little better for the players, because it is all about the players. And the fans, I don't know what I can tell you. I mean, uh, it's just uh, every year it just gets bigger. So we're going to keep going and keep making it bigger. And uh, just love having everybody here. But uh, staff, too, I want to thank my staff. Uh, as you see, I get all the credit. They do all the work, so typical management job. Uh, so anyway, congratulations. We love having you. Thank Come you, back Bob. next year to the fact.
Yeah. Thanks, Bob. And uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We really do appreciate being here. And Norm, just one more uh, before we turn you over to uh, Jerry Schneider, our PBA media staff. Mm. Uh, your, your great career, and uh, you've traveled all over the world, and you've been such a great ambassador. And uh, to win, uh, Walter Ray just won his 99th PBA banner the other day. Pete was trying to equal that tonight in your great career. Can you, can you place uh, uh, your participation on the senior tour now uh, in this major title uh, in, the, in, in, in your entire career? Because uh, it's something that you said uh, once, it has just struck me, a fan came up to you and asked um, about a particular an event, and, and you really placed it in a way that I remember very much, and you just said, Sir, I'm trying to make a career here, and I know how important your body of work is. Yeah, that's what this is. It's a body of work, and you know what? We're a work in progress. Um, just like the golfers or the tennis players or when you see the football players on Sunday, uh, they work hard at what they do, and it takes that, and they, they work harder than they think they can. And when you dig that deep, I tell you what, the good Lord comes and shines on you. Um, I want to say hi to my wife and my son at home. They, they work as hard as I do at this. So it's not only my career, my body of work, it's my family's, and I want to appreciate them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of the way while you can uh, appreciate the great champion and our winner here tonight, Norm Duke.